back again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Canon MPE 65mm 1-5x lens on a smaller subject to pull up some really high detail. And we're going to do a composite image, a series of, of images to make a stack. What I've chosen is a, a fly. Let me pull this out so you can see it. It's a little fly. It measures about 10 millimeters from end to end. Based on that, I looked at my lens sheet and sure enough, 65 millimeter lens material from two to 15 millimeters. So this falls in perfectly in that category. So that's gonna be the lens I'm gonna use. So before I mount my lens, there are a couple things I'm gonna do. When I came in to start the system, I turned on my plug strip, which activated my camera. Uh, I put power to this, I turned on my remote, and it, uh, my, my controller is also powered on. I then turned on my computer, everything is now running. I'm going to walk you through the setup, and then we're going to go on the screen time, and I'll show you that in, in, uh, while the software is running. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 65 millimeter lens. No, no, um, no subject underneath the camera. I'm going to turn my camera off. I'm going to reach over in my lens box and I'm going to grab my 65 millimeter. I'm going to remove the body cap of the. I'm going to tighten my camera down here. It takes off on me. I'm going to remove my body cap. I'm going to remove the rear cap. Remember the red dot. The red dot on the front of the lens always faces you. It mounts up to the camera. Now listen for the click. All right, that tells you that the lens is locked into position. Now I'm going to remove the, the lens cap, collect all of my gear, and get it out of my way. What I want to do is determine how I'm going to mount this. I want it to do a lateral shot of this fly. So for me, I could do it two ways. I could either just take a big pillar of wax and I could just stick it on one of my gray plates like this and take my pin and stick it in the side like this and spin it around. And now, can you zoom in on that? Now I would have a lateral mount that I could adjust. I do this a lot when I'm shooting dorsal inside the pinhole and I need a single quick lateral and I don't want to change mounts. But we can use that threaded uh, mount and I'll show you how to use that for a lateral. It's really nice. Again, I'm going to shoot a gray background, not black. So I flick my gray background up. I just screw in my post here on top. I'm going to put a small amount of wax on the top of that. And that's going to give me something to, for my pin to stick into, just like that. Now I just stick my pin in and I can set, I can set the vertical and I can twist the horizontal to where everything is lined up just the way I want it. Like so. And remember the camera is actually upside down. If you were standing up, your head would be here and your feet would be there. So it's upside down. So when you put your specimen upside down, it's going to be right side up in the viewfinder. All right, that's it for a good start. Now, I'm going to also um, have to determine what my magnification is going to be. So I'm going to turn on the live view. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start the rail software by pressing the passport key on the keyboard. And going over here and say take pictures. I'm going to reduce this and we're now up and running. Okay, 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start capture one so that I can actually have a live view of the specimen. I'll be using ambient light just to get a live view to get an idea. I have to turn on the camera. Now capture one sees it. I turn on my live view. Up here in my passport, I'm going to choose what lens I'm using. I'm using the uh, Canon 65mm. I'm going to be shooting at f4, I believe. And I don't know what my mag is yet, so I'm gonna, that's what we're going to find out. So, everything right now is just a big blur because I'm so far away from my subject. I'm going to try something in the middle between, I'm going to go about two and a half X. Now, this is important with this lens. I don't know if you can see this or not, if you can zoom in on it. On the barrel of this lens, there are markings. Let's say one X, one and a half, two, two and a half on down. And there's a line there. When you're focusing this lens down to that mag, you just rotate it until the outer barrel of this lens intersects, just touches that line. And that's how you know where it is. That's how you know it's on the right magnification. So now I'm going to physically move my, my stand down until I can see something and focus on my screen. So I'm going to move in the way here. And you can take a look at the screen there. You can see as I'm moving this down, and I can kind of see my thing. I'm moving my easel around down there. There, we got something going on. All right. So we're in proximity right there. Now, I had mentioned before that we don't want to fill up much more than 80% of our field of view. We're at two and a half times. I can go to three times and be comfortable with that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to 3x. And now that I had previously put it in position, I have enough latitude, enough movement on my rail, I can actually just use the infinite setting. I move my rail up electronically to see where my field of view is. So that's my field of view right here. And I've got just about, just about perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the bellows diffuser and I am going to set my lights up in a copy stand affair. I want to show you that first. Okay. So if, this is important too. If when you when you go to put your diffuser on, if you're not comfortable with the range that you have here, if that's a little too close for you to get into, you're afraid you might damage the specimen. We know we've set our, our lens magnification at 3x, right about there. So we can get very close to that. If we just retract this lens back to 1x, look at all the space we have now. So it's instead of moving our rail up and down, we're moving a lens. Now we can put our diffuser on and we can go back to 3x. And be right there. Now I'm going to put the bellows diffuser over the camera and lens and strap it in and we're done. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on my lights and position them equidistant from each side, like a copy stand. So they're one light on each side. So I loosen the knob again. And now everything becomes loose. I'm going to turn it on to AC power because that's what I'm using. Okay. I am set channel one, group A. And I'm going to put my light somewhere like this. I'm going to go over to my other light and do the same thing. Channel 1, Group A. Now, on my remote, I've got mode on manual. And I'm set to uh, 5, which is half of my power. 
I'm not half of my power. We're on five out of 10. So I can take a shot at this or I can put it on TTL. We've gone through TTL with 100 millimeter. Now I'm gonna show you how to find where you need to be on manual. At this point, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna stop this now with the, with the equipment, now that you have the basic setup. And I'm going to go onto the screen to show you what we're gonna be doing. You can see on the screen now there's live view and there is the uh, Passport software open. At this point, I'm gonna go through and show you how to take a test shot using the manual exposure only. Then we're gonna go into working on the screen. So, I'm gonna turn my modeling lights off. I am on manual mode. I'm going to turn off my live view and I'm going to take a test shot just to see where it comes in. Well, heck, that's almost perfect. <laughs> we just need a little bit more. So I'm going to raise my exposure up a bit. So I'm going to go over here. I'm at, I'm going to go to 5.3. Turn my modeling lamps off again. I was at five, now I'm gonna to go to five three. And that's right where I wanna be. All right, so being in manual is not a scary thing. It's actually a good thing because it doesn't change on you. All right, so the next step is we'll go into capsule one and I'll show you how to do the stack. Okay, now we're on the computer. We've got our capsule one open. Here is the passport software open. I'm going over some things. We, we uh, had selected the MPE lens. The f-stop is 4. The mag is 3. That's where we're going to leave this right now. Just be mindful we've set the camera to shoot at f4 because that's what we're telling our stacking program we're at. These two must be the same. f4 here, f4 there. We've gone over that with 100 millimeter. This is identical protocol. The difference between the 100 millimeter and the 65, the 65 shoots at a higher mag, <clears throat> Therefore, it has less depth of field and will require many more images to make an entire stack. So what we've done now is we've shot our first shot, and this was at uh, a flash intensity of 5.0, and uh, that's the power. And this was at 5.3, which is what we decided we wanted. Now we go into the white balance picker, and we pick the white balance. We just clicked it. You probably didn't see anything. I didn't. It's already shooting at auto white balance. It's very, very close. So now it's color accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the regular delete button and delete this one. And I'm going to hit this one with uh, my MX9 button, which absolutely throws it out so that it's not on the computer at all. I'm going to put on live view. And I'm going to turn on my modeling lamps to 100% so we can see our specimen. <clears throat> The first thing I want to do is establish where my lowest point is. Now, I know this fly, it's going to probably be one of these two back legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with my live view on and my modeling lamps on, I have it in infinite movement. I am just going to go down and watch. As I'm, as I'm going down, I'm clicking. I'm seeing what is the last thing in focus, okay? my eye caught it it's right up in here so now i'm going to go back up and i'm going to double click this area and i'm going to go down and as i'm going down i can see it's getting sharper uh-huh now this is coming in right up in here right up to there that's it i just went past my lowest point so i'm going to say stop here I'll double click my live view, which brings me back to 100%. Now I'm going to go up. Now on these flies with these split wings, the top wing is always the highest point. And it's so far above the body. See, like now the body is dropping out of focus, but we have to just keep going up and up and up and up to get to this wing. 
So this is going to be a lot of images to make one stack. It's going to be right up here on the top of the wing. As you can see, it's starting to come in. So let me zoom in. I'm just tickling the up button. That's it, right at the top of the wing. There's my start. Now remember, I'm going to go past my start and I'm going to come down on it. So that I'm, I'm actually coming down. The motor is going in the same direction as it's going to be all the way through the stack. So I come down to my top point. And I say, that's it, right there. And I say, start here. So now my bottom is set. You can see where it says set. And my top is set where it says set. And look at the number of steps. It's going to take 56 steps. That equals 57 images. That's a lot of images. So what I want to do, I want to make sure that my dwell has plenty of time. So... I'm going to give it a three second dwell. That gives the lights plenty of time to cool down. I'm going to turn off my modeling lamps. I am going to close out live view. And I'm going to make sure I've got everything set before I go do this enormous stack. What we'll do is we'll, we'll run the stack through and then I'll edit the video so you don't have to wait through the whole thing. But I'll note how long it takes. As a matter of fact, I'll put my, my clock on to, to check it. So I think I've got everything set. My uh, overlap is at zero. My dwell is at three seconds. And that's it. Um, I'm going to hit start and that'll do it. And there we go. Be back in 57. Okay, we've gone ahead and we've shot. We have 57 images up here. <clears throat> this took about three minutes to go through uh, the whole series, which wasn't bad. Let's go look at our final image. I'm going to double click on the last one right up here at the point of interest. So I grab my hand, my pan hand. I double click it and I see where it is. And there's the one prior and there's the one before that. So, yeah, we're good. We have what we need. And I'm going to go up to the top one and make sure that I have the very top of the wing. And I do. Yay. Okay. So, <clears throat> I have all of my pieces here. Now I have to stack them, put them together, and export them. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to select them all by hitting Control-A or the MX7 key, which would select all. Then I'm gonna hit my export key, which is MX8, which brings up this window. I'm going to make a subfolder for these and I'm gonna call it small fly. And I'm gonna name my file SMFLY-65 millimeter dash 3x. So this way I know I shot it with my 65 millimeter and it's at 3x. I've selected all of them. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit process. This is going to grab all of these out and it's going to start processing them. There's a lot of images here. So it's going to take about 40 seconds to process. So I'm going to reduce that. <clears throat> I think what I'll do is I'll grab Helicon. So if I grab Helicon Focus, bring it up. I'm going to need to get to those folders. So let me go in here and I'm going to go to my primary image drive and my capture one. And let's see, I believe I was in my folder, Roy. Okay. So I grab that folder. I go into output folder and there's my small fly folder. Okay. And you'll see it populating with, with images. See capture one isn't quite done yet. See the green down here when it disappears, it'll be done. Done. Okay, so now we have all of our, all of the images in this folder. I'll click on one. I'll hit select all. And I'm going to drag them over to this side. I'll close this folder out. Now I'm going to stack them. So I can go down here at the bottom and hit render. And now it's stacking, what, 58? 143 meg images.
and it's done right there. This is our this is our final shot. So I'm going to sit file, save. I'm going to go into this folder and I'm going to grab any one of these because it has the name on it. And then again, I like to just cover the end with the word comp. Hit enter and we're done. I'm going to close this out. Now I'll open it up in Photoshop. I could either double click it in that folder or I can go get it from Photoshop. I like to get it from Photoshop. So I'll go file open and I'm going to go look in a new folder output and there's small fly. It's usually on the end. There's my comp. I'm going to open it up and now I'm going to add shadow highlights because what I did is I, I purposely underexposed this a little bit because the hall tear was bright white. So what I can do is I can go to image adjustments, go to shadow highlights, turn it down a little bit because it's a bit on the high side, but watch what this does. Shadow highlights will bring up the detail in my shadows without destroying the highlights. I'm going to hit the preview button. This is with shadow highlights turned on. That's without it. That's with it. That's without it. I like it with it. With it is good. We, in fact, we might even kick that up a hair more. So we're good there. That's it. I'm going to give it a tiny bit of sharpening, which would be F2. I'm going to hit Control Alt Zero. I mean, yeah, uh, Control Alt Zero, which will bring this to 100%. Let's see what we have. Look, you can even see the texture on the steel pin. Okay, this is out of the box without any uh, adjustment in the stacking program, without any editing of any kind. Look at that detail. Now watch what happens when we sharpen this. Uh, you can see the pin coming right through this little guy. <clears throat> now, let's add a little tiny bit of sharpening. If we do F2 which is the mildest sharpening. That's it. I wouldn't go any more than that. That's absolutely beautiful. So now I'm going to bring out the magnification a little bit and I'm going to, I might even crop this a bit. So I'm going to grab my select tool. Something like that. And I'm going to go image crop and I'm going to put a scale under here. So now I'm going to hit F7, which brings up, whoop, let me get off my cursor there. F7, which brings up my measurement scale. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to look and I'm going to find 65 millimeter at 3x right here. I click it once and now Photoshop knows what scale, what, what measurement scale to use. Now I pick up scales on M7 and I tell it how big I want the scale. I'm going to do something relatively small, knowing that this is about 10 millimeters. I want a one millimeter scale. I'm going to pick Arial as my font. My font size, I want something gracious, about 18 points. And I do want it in black because I have a nice neutral gray background. Hit OK. There's my scale. I can now park this wherever I want it. I have a beautiful finished image. At this point, I am going to, I'm going to flatten my image. So I'm going to go to layer because I just, because I don't need, I want to flatten the image. With, I want to keep the scale on it. So I'll flatten the image. I am going to go file, save as, and I'm going to say my comp with scale. That way I know it's been edited. S C A L. E, I spell. Okay. Save. Okay. Okay. And I close this out. That's it. Well, before I close that out, let me open up the original one so you can see the two next to each other. Okay. Now I'm going to tile them together.
All right. So there's the one, our finished one, and there's our one without the shadow highlights. So I like the one with the shadow highlights. It brightens it up. I also like the scale in there. That's nice. It's really crispy. So, hey, we did good. We're done with this one. And that's it for the 65 millimeter. That's a pretty easy walk. Let me close this out. Close out Photoshop. I am going to bring back Capture One. Now, to clear all of my thumbnails out of here, I click on any one of my thumbnails and I hit MX10, which is delete all, and it will just run through all of those 58 files and they're gone. That's it. We're done. Then I would close out Capture One or go to move to my next session. The next thing we're going to do is a different type of imaging, but we'll leave Capture One open. That's it.